In this video, I'm going to be talking about Armadale Capital, a company that I've invested in for a few years, and I've written a research note, and it's on my website, spunshare.com. I've also done a few blogs on the company as the story has unfolded. And in this video, I'm just going to bring you up to date with where they're at, what they've got, and the opportunity that I see, uh, given they've just announced their mining license award, which uh, opens the door to financing and production. So the company issued a DFS uh, recently and it's a robust study delivering a low capex project. The capex is $39.7 million with a 430 million um, pre-tax MPV and that gives an IRR of 91%, so very strong economics. For those that like to look at post-tax figures, well the uh, MPV still comes in just shy of 300 million. So when you compare that to a 39 million uh, capex that's uh, that's a pretty uh, incredible ratio you can see also um, various uh, you know outputs from the DFS uh, they all look good lots of free cash flow over the life of mine pretty much nearly a billion dollars and um, what's interesting here is that you can see that Armadale have used quite a conservative basket price for the graphite they're going to be graphite concentrate they're going to be selling and if you look at peers such as uh, Black Rock Mining, which is probably one of the closest peers and also it's got the same sort of project area, they've used about 20% higher in their DFS inputs. So, you know, a nice conservative number there from Armadale and, um, you know, excellent economics. This is based just on 25% of the resource, by the way. The DFS was done by Battery Limits in Perth, they're a respectable outfit and they've got clients such as BHGP Bulletin, so, uh, you know, a top quality study if you like. What does it all mean then? Well, uh, Armadale have been on a bit of a journey and they're sort of coming to the end of that really on the home straight. Um, I think they're uniquely placed because they've got one of the highest purity graphite projects in Tanzania and this will allow them to tap into the, uh, you know, the impending demand from the EV sector. Um, it really is a premium product. So the company actually commissioned uh, Ciro, who have got a world-class specialist battery team to um, test the product and they've confirmed that it's high purity and a premium product that uh, will fit well uh, with uh, lithium ion batteries. So that's great news and, and it's good that Armadale have, uh, have done that and commissioned that separate study. In terms of the actual DFS and planning flow sheet and the uh, engineering design, they um, also brought in uh, EPC companies in high minerals and they have um, done test work as well and they've also confirmed the uh, quality of the graphite concentrate that they're going to be producing. And if you look at that little table down on the right hand side there you can see uh, you know across the sort of small to medium flake fractions which are ideal for uh, EV batteries they've got 97% plus in some cases 98% uh, purities which is very high purity and you know a lot of graphite peers to ASP have struggled um, ACP have struggled with um, graphite purities you know zero resources other other companies that are producing at the moment can only really get sort of purity levels between anywhere between sort of 93 and 96 percent uh, and why it's important is because when you scale up to this sort of spherical graphite used in the anodes in the batteries you want 99.99 percent purity and so if your starting position is a lot higher as armadale's is then you're already um, going to get a premium price for the product so uh, you know excellent product is something that's attracted me here so financing then well that's what we're looking at now, and I think it's a real possibility given such low capex. Um, I think they're you know, very well positioned here to close out the financing. They've got lots of options uh, available to them um, with, with, the, with the financing, but it's gonna be attractive to uh, you know, anyone who's, say, for example, lending debt on the, in terms of the payback period. You know, it's gonna be quite a low risk um, uh, you know, lend for them on the debt component. Um, the mining license and the environmental permit Really, those two awards now were the steep, uh, key step required to conclude the financing, and so I expect that to. Uh, you know, the company has said that they're in uh, advanced stages with the financing, and they also actually dropped something new into the RNS um, that they put out the other day, uh, which was that they're actually specifically looking at the debt component of the financing as well. So. You know, they, <clears throat> it looks like they're actually pretty advanced now, and um, that was interesting to see. I actually thought about it, and uh, the company's currently capped at just about just under 30 million sterling. And really, 30 million sterling is about what they need for the actual project construction and development to get it into production. So even on a 100% dilution basis, with a market cap of 60 million, taking just all equity. Uh, you know, you're left with a 60 million pound uh, company that's um, you know going to be basically 
uh, pushing free cash flow through of sort of a billion dollars over the initial life of the mine. So it's a, a very compelling and interesting situation. Of course, the company, I don't think, will just do 100% dilution. They don't need to, but it's an interesting point to note. So key news flow to come, well, conversion of MOUs to binding offtake agreements. Now they've done all the test work. I think that's what they wanted to do, get the test work done first so they can show what product they've got rather than just saying we've got graphite, concentrate, what are you going to give us for it? Um, you know, hopefully they're now going to be able to strike some premium pricing in those offtakes. Uh, fee study completion phase two, and that's just we're going to, should be closed out, I think, in the next sort of three months or so, and then that will be uh, then ready for preparing for construction. And obviously, once they kick that off, it's um, you know 10 to 12 months to production. So the, obviously, the project finance as well is going to be the big one we're going to be looking out for. And as I said a minute ago, you know, there's various options there: debt, equity, royalty, offtake based options, um, given the very low capex. So I like to sum it up as right place, right product, right time. Uh, the company valued at just 28 million at the moment. That's less than 10% of the project post-tax MDB. Uh, they're lagging similar stage ASX peers such as BlackRock who are trading at 75 million sterling plus today. Uh, pretty much same stage now as well. So that's an interesting point. Pretty much a factor of two um, if you're an Armadale investor. Uh, gain. Millions of historic spend on the drilling and high confidence resource. So they, you know, they spent a lot of money and confirming the resource up to measured indicated. They've got a robust DFS and they've got the permitting through as well. All of this costs a lot of money. You know, you see a lot of early stage explorers at the moment, you know, putting the news out every day or, or, or shouting about their sort of projects, uh, what they've got in, think they've got in the ground. You know, to take that through to uh, any one of those projects getting into uh, production, it's going to cost you tens of millions of pounds. And Armadale have done that now, so that's baked into the current market cap, which is why I think it looks like a very good uh, and appealing level at the moment at just uh, five and a half or six pence. Um, they've done extensive, extensive test work as well with the leading independent third, third parties, not just Armadale doing this, this is actually third party confirmation of the product they've got, that's a big de-risking step in itself for me as well. And uh, obviously they can, you know, can tap into the EV battery market, which was, you know, is something that's gonna to appeal to a lot of investors, it does to me. Um, the company could be due, producing as, uh, as early as H1 2023, given the uh, short construction timeline. So, you know, it's only about 10 to 12 months. So, you know, if they're, if they're kicking off early next year with construction or even uh, H1 next year with construction, they could be producing graphite the following year. And um, for me, that's entering the graphite market and what could be a demand sweet spot. So, again, um, you, you know, right time, I think, is uh, pertinent here. So for me now, it's just about the numbers. And as you can see from the DFS, uh, they, they, they stack up. And um, I think it's a very interesting investment. So thank you for listening to the video. If you want to see more research articles and videos, go to my website, spunshare.com, or follow me on Twitter at The Money Sponge.